The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. A large crowd had collected at the dock to greet the last boat of the season, landing at Dawson City on the Yukon River. Cheers cut through the clear air as the Bonanza Bell steamed into port. Among the crowd was Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police, who was there to check the names of newcomers into the North Country. Beside the sergeant stood a big gray dog who never left his master. As the boat docked and prepared to unload its passengers and freight, a small man whose head barely reached the Mounty's shoulder came toward him. The small man smelled strongly of fish and was therefore known as Fishy Freddy. Hello there, Sergeant Preston. Oh, hello, Freddy. You look all excited about something. You meeting someone on the boat? Uh, nope, not someone. Oh, I'm meeting something that's more a lot important to me than any person. Oh, what's that? I've been saving every penny I made catching fish to buy a piano. It's on the Bonanza Bell right now. A piano? Why in the world would you want a piano? Oh, I know. It, it does strike people funny. Fishy Freddy playing the piano, but... Well, it's the only pleasure I've got in the world. I ain't very good to look at it. You know, I ain't very smart at popular. But I can't forget all that if I can play the piano. Well, where'd you get it, Freddy? A friend of mine shipped it up from White Horse. He took every penny I had. Oh, I guess it ain't much of a piano. It was in a bar down there, and they're getting another one. But if it's got any keys at all, it'll be worth it to me. Well, where are you going to keep it? You haven't a cabin. Well, Barney said I could keep it at the Gold Nugget Cafe. He says I could play it in there nights, and, and he'd give me my meals for doing it. Good. Maybe you can pick up some tips once in a while. Yeah, well, I could sure use them, all right. Well, there goes the gangplank. I have to go and check the passengers now. Come over to the gold nugget and hear me play, sergeant. I'll do that, Freddy. Hope the piano's all right. Come along, King. <laughs> Let me through, please. Excuse me. Look at the passengers. I bet they all think they're going to be millionaires in a week. <laughs> Wait till they get a taste of 70 below. <laughs> Just a moment, sir. We check all newcomers. Your name, please, and your occupation. Francis Babson, mining engineer. Your home and next of kin? Newburyport, Massachusetts. Hmm? Here's to kin, my sister, Imogene Babson. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Your name, please. Sure, and it's Pat O'Malley. I ain't got any occupation. And you don't have to ask where I come from. <laughs> the map is all over me face. Oh, yes, Ireland, of course. But what part? Dublin. And I've got ten brothers and sisters. Let's see now. There's Molly, Mike. Oh, Tom. that's enough. All right, Pat. Go on. Mm. Hurry Pat. up. We ain't going to stand here all day. Watch that spalpeen, Sergeant. He's oh. mean. Oh. Fought with everyone on the boat. If he hadn't been almost two feet taller than me, I'd have thrown him to the fish. I'll take care of him. Stop that pushing. Hey, what's the idea of all this? Your name and occupation. Hey, what's the idea of all this red tape? Can I wait? Hey, you. Take that dog away from me before I kick his teeth in. Quiet. You won't lose anything but a foot. Your name, please. It's Red McGraw. I was a stevedore in Frisco. No relatives. Go ahead. But watch that temper. You'll get yourself in trouble. <laughs> I can take care of myself. Next, please. Your name, sir? Later that night in the hotel room, Red McGraw sat talking with two other men. Turk Marshall was a short, heavy-set man with shaggy brows and black whiskers. Slim Taylor was small, quick, and shifty-eyed. Both of them feared the big red-headed giant before them. Now, the first thing you got to get through those thick skulls of yours is that we ain't to be seen together. That's why I got this room on the ground floor. If you want to talk to me, come in the window. Did you locate a hideout anywhere? Sure, Red. We got one on the river, just like you said. Nobody could ever find it. It's way off through the trail, through the woods. Uh, you have to walk close to the riverbank for a quarter mile. Did you have sense enough to hide it from the river if someone passes it in a boat? Sure we did. 
You think we're dumb? Yeah, I do. We built a shack back in the woods. Trees hide it from the river. And what about a place to keep the furs? Well, there's room for them in the shack. And there's a cave and a hill just a little away from the shack. In the case we get a lot of them. We're going to get a lot of them. How about a boat? That's all fixed, too. There's a canoe for you to use to get to town from the hideout. And we bought a scow from a little run of a salmon fisherman. He needed the money. <laughs> His name was Fishy Freddy. And did he smell? <laughs> we ain't got time for jokes. Now, we got to work fast before the river freezes up. The trappers are bringing lots of furs in here right now. We'll get about three loads of them on the scow and head down the river and work the next town. Are you going to hide out with us? No. I am too big to try hiding myself from people. I'm going to be very much in evidence around town. Monies don't suspect people who attract attention. You better stay away from whiskey, Red. That's how you got in trouble that last time. Listen, you little cockroach. I'm the one who's giving orders around here. Try giving them to me and I'll knock that gold tooth of yours through your windpipe. Don't get mad, Red. Slim didn't mean nothing. All right. Now, tomorrow, find a place where the trail comes down near the river. It better be a long way from the hideout. We'll tie the boat there and hold up the trappers on the trail. Then we'll use a boat to take the furs back to the cabin, so there won't be any way of tracking us there. Will there be any killing? We'll let you take care of the boat, babyface. You'll leave the man's part of this job to Turk and me. Dusk was falling the following evening when Red and Turk, concealed behind a clump of trees, watched a trapper approach on the trail. A mule loaded high with furs plodded beside him. Red got his rifle ready. You gonna shoot him before he sees us? Sure. I'll plug him and you grab the mule. We'll take the furs and the trapper's body down the boat. We'll dump the body in the river and on the way back to the cabin so nobody will know where he was killed or when. Here he comes. Yeah. I can't miss him from here. You got him. I'll stop the mule. Yeah. Oh, go oh, there. Easy now. Ooh. Hang on to him. Oh, I got him. Is the trapper dead? Sure. Now bring that mule over here. Come on, get up. We'll put this man's body on the mule. Take the first of the boat along with him. Uh, help me lift him up. All right. Oh, there. Up, up, up. Uh, now. now there won't be a sign of a crime. How about the mule? <laughs> when we get him unloaded, we'll just give him a crack and let him run. <laughs> Nobody can recognize a mule. Get up, you lop head slug. As soon as we get to the we'll dump this body. The current will carry it downstream. You and Slim can take the first to hide out. Ain't you coming with us? No. I'm going back to town. And be very much in evidence at the Gold Nugget Cafe tonight. <laughs> Nobody will know I left town. That's the boy, Freddy! Whoever would have thought that smelly little squid could play a piano? I ain't heard a piano since I left Arkansas. Oh, I wish he'd play an Irish jig. But he says he don't know any. Uh, hello, boys. Hello, uh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, look, look, there's Red McGraw. Watch out for trouble it's drinking. He loves to pick a fight. Gosh, he's a big fella. Must be six feet four. He's as strong as an ox, too. Don't tangle with him. Hey, you. You and that piano. You talking to me, mister? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Cut out that rotten noise. Look, he's making oh, Freddy stop. Everybody yeah. wants me to play. I don't want you to. I don't like music, so quit it. Oh, let him play. What's wrong with you? Yeah, let him play. We like him. If anybody wants an argument, step up here. All right. Now, when I come into this place after this, I want you to quit playing right away. You understand? You weren't so big, bigger than I was. I You'd what? Put me down in my neck. Let go. Put him down. Let go. Oh, you. I just you... wanted to show you how I can lift you up with one hand. Come on, boys. Now that there's peace and quiet, let's have a drink. <laughs> It was a week later that Red and Turk again took their places on the trail near the river, their guns ready to ambush the first trapper to appear with a load of furs. Quiet. Here comes somebody. Yeah, it looks like a trapper carrying his furs on his back. Maybe we better not bother with him. 
There ain't enough furs to matter. That depends on the furs. Their mink or fox would be passing up a good bet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can't lose anything. There's nobody on the trail. And no horse or mule to be left for evidence. I'm gonna let them have it. You got him. Come on, Red. Sergeant Preston was watering his horse at a creek that wound down to the river from the trail north of Dawson. King, his dog, was lapping water thirstily beside the horse. When the shot rang out from around the bend ahead, King raised his head and looked at his master for instructions. It's probably just a hunter, King, but we better find out. Go on, King, I'm coming. Stay there. All right, come on, fella. King had rounded the bend ahead of the Monty when suddenly Sergeant Preston's horse stumbled. Steady up now! The Monty's head struck a small rock as he fell, and he lay motionless on the ground. A moment later, as Red and Turk bent over the body of the trapper, Turk suddenly grasped Red's arm. Red, look! There's a big gray dog coming around the bend. He's coming for us. Where? My gun. Give me my gun. You ain't got time. Wait. You, you, you. Get Wait, him, Red. I can't. Get, get him. No, not yet. Get him. I'll off. get him. Get him. Get him. There. 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 That took care of him. Gosh, you swung that gun just in time. He was coming for you. Sure knocked him out. Grab those first, Turk. We got to get to the boat right now. I want to get into town before this body is found. Are we taking this body with us? Hey, we haven't time. Lead him there. That dog belongs to a Mountie. He's probably coming along the trail. Now, hurry. We'll get the furs to the boat and go back to the hideout. And then I'll go back to town. I'm coming. The big gray dog lay motionless on the trail, blood dripping from the cut in his head where the gun had struck him. Slowly, his eyes opened, and he lifted his head, but sank back again as a searing pain ran through it. He lay still for a few moments while the world seemed to swing dizzily about him. Then the scent of the man who had struck him pierced his nostrils and a growl rumbled in his throat as he rolled upright on his haunches. There was no sign of the man who had swung the gun at him, only the still figure of the trapper lying dead on the trail. King waited a moment, trying to gather his strength. Then he rose dizzily to his feet and started back toward the place he had last seen his master. As he rounded the bend, he saw the Monty's horse standing beside the trail, and then the figure of Sergeant Preston lying a few feet away. His own pain was forgotten as he crouched at his master's side, whining and licking his face and tugging at his sleeve. Finally, the Monty stirred, and his eyes opened. Oh, oh my head. All right, old fellow. I'll be better in a minute. All right, King. Don't worry, boy. Hello! Uh, oh, someone's coming. Well, if it ain't Sergeant Preston. Ooh. What happened to you, Sergeant? Oh, are you hurt bad? It was just my head. I, I was stunned, I guess. You remember me now, don't you? I'm Pat O'Malley. I saw you at the boat when we landed here. Oh? Oh, yes. I'm a little groggy. My horse fell and my head hit something. Oh, you've got a lump on your head like a hen's egg. Yeah, I'm better now. Your horse ain't hurt none, no? That's good. But what happened to your dog here? What? King. Got a cut on his head. King, old fella, come here, boy. What? I couldn't see very well when I came to. Oh, that's a nasty cut. Pat, there's a first aid kit in my saddlebag. I better fix this right away. Oh, would you listen to the man? Wanting to fix the dog's head. You're the one whose head needs fixing. The dog's all right. That cut ain't bleeding. Here. Let me help you up now. My head's better. I'm sure I can walk. You stand right here, and I'll get your horse and go back to town with you. You'd better not try to walk now. Come here, King. Let me look at your head again, fella. Oh, oh there. Oh. Come on. You know, I can't figure out how King got this cut. That thick fur of his kept him from being hurt much. Well, the cut isn't too bad, but how'd he no, get no, it? Now, now, quit you worrying about that dog. He's lively as an eel. Now, let me help you on this horse and get you back to town. Wait a minute, Pat. Look at King. Huh? Hey, he's running down the trail. What's wrong with him? He wants me to follow him. But that's the other way from town. You've got to get there. Which way did you come from, Pat? I came from town. I remember now. I heard a shot around that bend. I was going to see what it was. My horse fell. Now, you better not try to do anything until your head's better. King knows something. My head's clear now. Steady, fella. Come on, Pat. I've got to see what it is. Come on, there. 
You sure take a lot of that dog of yours, Sergeant? King wouldn't act like this unless there was something wrong. Look, he's barking around the bend. There he is. There's a man lying on the trail. Hurry, Pat. Get up there. Oh, oh no. Easy, fella. <laughs> yes, King, I see him. Who is it, Sergeant? It's old Dan Forrester, a trapper. Someone shot him. He's dead. Dead? I think the man who hit King is the one who killed Dan. Where is he, boy? Find him. They, he's going toward the river. Now he stopped at the bank. I thought he would. That's how they worked it. Uh, worked what? Yesterday, the body of a trapper was found in the river. He'd been dead a long time. The mule of another trapper came into town alone, and his owners disappeared. Oh. Some fur thieves are working in this territory, Pat. And they use a boat? Yes. Until now, they've carried the victim's body away in the boat with them. This time, King must have frightened them, and they left this one. You can't track him now. King could trail them from here if they'd gone on foot. But King knows that killer. If you could point him out to me, I might solve this case. Sergeant Preston had left the body of the trapper at the cabin of one of his friends near the edge of town. King ran along beside the Monty's horse. They went down the main street toward police headquarters. Suddenly, Sergeant Preston saw King stop in the street ahead. The hair on the dog's back bristled. An angry growl roared from his throat as he ran toward a large standing in front of the gold nugget bar. The man rushed into the cafe and closed the door just as the great dog hurtled against it. King! King, what's wrong with you? Oh, 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 easy there. What's wrong with you, King? Back, fella. Let me in here. No, you're not coming in. Stay back, I said. Back. your dog out there? Yes. Did you just come in here, Freddy? Uh, no, I, I was just leaving. Red McGraw just came in as if someone was chasing him, and I heard your dog. Red McGraw. Where is he? Over there at the bar. He never likes me to play my piano. That's why I was leaving. I see. Well, Freddy, you play that piano any time you want to. It's none of his business. He gets awful rough when he drinks, Sergeant. I, I'm afraid of him. Was, was King chasing him? Yes, I think so. Freddy, I have to go back to headquarters right away, but I'll be back this evening. I'd like to hear you play that piano. Well, uh, I'll play it if Red McGraw ain't here. He's starting to drink now. I won't dare, You Sergeant. play that piano whether he's here or not, and I hope he tries to stop you. I'll play if you're here, Sergeant. Sure. I won't be afraid then. Later that night at the Gold Nugget Cafe, Freddy stood beside his piano, surrounded by prospectors and trappers. Come on, Freddy, give us a tune now. How about an Irish song to change? Play Frankie and John. I'll give you a fat tip if you will. No, not just yet, boys. I'll play lighter. But why? Oh, I see. It's on account of Red McGraw over there, isn't it? Right. He's been drinking all evening. He's in a nasty humor. Why don't we get a couple of chairs and beat him over the head? Why, there comes Sergeant Preston. It's the first time I ever saw him without his big dog. I'll get him over here. Then you can play, Freddy. Uh, no, Father. He seems to want to stay over there beside the door. I'll play. I ain't afraid now. Freddy's going to play for us, boys. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's fine, Freddy. That's fine. Hey, you little piece of rotten salmon. Didn't I tell you not to play that thing when I was in here? Oh, let him alone. He's not hurting nothing. Watch out now, boys. Red's mean when he's drunk. I see he's going to quit playing that thing. <laughs> Look out. He's got the axe for the wood box. Get away from there. Get, Get on that now. stool. You'll never play this thing again. Can you stop him. Stop him. He's picking up our piano. Stop you, bully. Get back or I'll use it on you. You'll be that axe. Right. <laughs> he's broken. He'll never play again, Sergeant. You're under arrest, McGraw. Sure. It's a mounty. The one who's on the pier with a big dog to protect him. The dog isn't here now. Yeah. But you got a gun on you. If you weren't wearing that uniform, I'd break you in half. Oh? You would? Well, maybe you've a little more than just a jail sentence coming to you. Here, Pat. Hold this gun and belt. What? What you going to do, Sergeant? I'm going to teach this bully a lesson. All right, Fred, I'm taking my tunic off. I'll be out of uniform then, and I'm off duty. Here, hold this, Pat. Sure. Oh, he's going to fight Red. Clear the floor now. Make a ring, boy. This will be worth watching. Now, Red, you're not fighting the law. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, Sergeant. He's like a gorilla. Oh, look at that trap with you. 
comes to, I'll take him to jail. That's the best fight I ever saw. You sure took him fast, Sergeant. Uh, off the end. It's right. See, the fight like this should have been worth it to you. That's it, Juan. Sergeant Mafiana. It was two days later. Red McGraw was sullen as he sat in the small jail. Old Jake, the jailer, handed his supper through the bars. Here's your supper, Red. Hope your jaw is well enough to chaw that stew meat. You think it's funny to remind me of the fight all the time, don't you, Jake? Well, if I hadn't had too much to ah, drink... Ah, go on. You should have known better than tangle with a Mountie. They're trained boxers. Uh, uh, listen, Jake. About our proposition. If you just get me out of here... I that... told you no. Are you in here to stay till you get enough money to buy another piney for Freddy? But how can I get the money when I'm stuck in this rotten jail? Uh, it sure looks kind of hopeless, don't it? I thought maybe you'd get some friends to help you out. No, uh, I haven't any friends. Then you go, Freddy. The outside, Jake. Now I got to go to jail. On top of getting my piano off, bro. There's another prisoner for you, Jake. This time it's your nephew. Why, Freddy... Why'd you arrest him, Sergeant? Freddy tried to steal some money from the Gold Nugget Cafe, and we uh, caught him at it. I was going to give it back, Uncle Jake, honest. I, I just wanted another piano, that's all. I'd have given all my tips until I paid it back. Sorry, Freddy, but the law is the law. Open up the cell, Jake. Stealing money. Get in there. And the Sergeant, if you puts me in jail, there's nobody to take care of my salmon nets. i got to take care of them. I'll get somebody to do it for you. Sorry about this, Jake. <laughs> well, well, you look who's here. Well, it's all your fault, you big bully. If he hadn't broke my piano, it wouldn't be here now. Listen, you little mackerel. If you're going to room with me, you'd better watch your tongue. All rough stuff there, Red. I'll see you later, Jake. All right, Sergeant. You had any supper, Freddy? I don't want any, Uncle Jake. If only he'd let me go to my fish nets. Uh, you better eat something. I'll go out and get you some supper. You, uh, you say that jailer is your uncle? Right. It won't do me any good. I shouldn't have taken that money. Now I'll lose my salmon catch, too. I know what I'd do if he was my uncle. What would you do? I'd ask him for the key to the jail. I'd tell him <laughs> if I was you that I'd be back again by morning. You could slip out about midnight, fix your nets, be back here again before morning. <laughs> Nobody would know the difference. I wonder if he would I'd be back by morning. Uncle Jake knows I'm honest. Now, he, he wouldn't do it because he knows you'd know about it. All right, don't do it. I'm sleepy. I didn't sleep a wink last night. I uh, hope you don't mind if I snore. <laughs> Sometimes I snore so loud I wake myself up. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Snore all you want to. Here's some stew, Freddy. Oh, I can't eat Uncle Jake. Red's trying to sleep. Don't talk too loud. Well, the way he sleeps, nothing would wake him. Here, now, you eat this. Why'd you take that money, son? I just didn't think, I guess. I, I just wanted another piano. Well, I'll get somebody to take care of them nets for you. Don't worry. Red's asleep. Listen to him. Yeah, he always snores like that. Uncle Jake. Yeah? You knows I'm honest, don't you? I always thought so, up till now. I can't tell anyone exactly where them salmon nets are. If they give me the key to the cellar, our little people are all asleep. I'll go out and fix the nets, and, and I promise I'll be back here before it's light on. Oh, I can't do that. Red's liable to wake up and take the key away from you or something. I got an idea. You give me your handcuffs. Just before I go, I'll handcuff them to the bed. If he hears me getting out, he, he won't be able to get to me. Well, uh, will you promise you'll come right straight back here? Oh, sure, Uncle Jake. I, I wouldn't get you in trouble. All right, Freddy. Here's the handcuffs. And here's the key. Now, you remember, you be back here before it gets light. A few hours had passed. 
The jail was silent except for Red snoring. Quietly, Freddy stepped toward him. What are you doing, Freddy? Why, you... <laughs> Thought I was asleep, didn't you? Well, I ain't been asleep at all. You, you mean... You mean you heard me and Uncle Jake? Sure I did. Heard every word. Now, give me that key. No, no. Give it to me or I'll break every bone in your body. Sure, Red. Don't hit me. Here. Why, you... Well, you can't go now, Red. We're handcuffed together. And Uncle Jake didn't give me the key to the handcuffs either. Why, you dirty little fishy twerp. I... Good, this ain't gonna stop me. You're coming with me. Now, give me that key. When I get these handcuffs sawed apart, it'll be just too bad for you. Now, we're getting out of here. Please, Red, don't go so fast. I'll keep stumbling in the dark, Shut Red. your whining. If it wasn't for you, I, I could have used a canoe to get here. Now they might track it. I could have paddled. Yeah. Uh, you blast it. We've come so far. Where are we? This way, through these trees. Oh, Red, not so fast, uh, please. Come on, I said. There's a cabin way back here near the river. Yeah, this is where we're going. Uh, get in there. <laughs> Turk, swim. You hear? Uh, who? It's What's Red. What's going on? Light a lantern, quick. Red, what are you... Get the first pack and on a boat right away. We're leaving tonight. Where you been? We couldn't find you anyway. Who's this? I've been in jail. I get a file out of that boat and cut me loose. We're handcuffed together. We gonna take him with us? No. He's gonna stay here and feed the fish he's been trying to catch. Now, please don't tell me, Red. I won't tell all this time. I'll say don't... you won't. Not with a bullet through your head. I get that file, Slim. Yeah. Get your hands up. What? Wait, wait. You won't need that file, Red. I have the key for those. Why, what? Mount that dog. Oh, oh, oh. Come on in, Jake. Well, we got all of them, I guess, Sergeant. Well, look at the fur. Golly, I'm sure glad you two got here. Unlock those handcuffs, Jake. You did a nice job, Freddy. You're a very good actor. You mean this was all planned? Why, <laughs> Freddy ain't even my nephew. Are you dirty little fish peddler? You mean he, he didn't steal any money at all? No, Red. And after tonight... The boys in the gold nugget will take up the collection to get him another piano. I uh, sure got even with you, you big bully, for busting the one I had. I'll put these other handcuffs on the other two. Come on, you. Uh, Holy Sergeant, uh, I didn't know whether he was buying this or not. I had a hard time holding King back, Freddy. You see, Red, King was the one who pointed you out to me. He knew you were the killer on the trail the other day. That cur. I should have bashed his head in with that That's rifle. That's enough out of you. Yes, King, old boy. Thanks to you, the case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Real-life crime stories direct from police files all over America. That's what Gangbusters brings you every Saturday night over most of these ABC stations you hear some of the most daring stories from criminal annals ever reenacted. And before any case is presented to the radio audience, it's triple checked. A gangbusters representative gathers the material from law enforcement bureaus, and the chief of each bureau must approve every fact in the report before it is prepared for the air. Here's another interesting item about gangbusters. Each Saturday night, this program broadcasts clues of criminals currently wanted by the police. Since gangbusters started, hundreds of clues have been aired, and over 90% of the people wanted have been captured. Don't miss gangbusters when it's heard tonight over most of...